comic fam, I got to give you a warning right out the gate. It's about to get cold. You're going to got to get your jacket, your gloves on. We have the 10 cold books to chat about. And on the mic virtually, broadcasting from somewhere on Spaceship Earth, we have David from Comic Book Investments on YouTube. How you feeling, brother? I'm feeling good. Awesome. Thanks for having me on this channel. I can, uh, I'm hoping I can teach these people a little bit about what's going on in the comic industry and books that are dropping off. We gathered 10 books that have seen a dip that have lowered in price. And David, on your channel, you cover a lot about market volatility, the changes and fluctuation of prices. How important is it to monitor the dips? So it's pretty important to watch when comics are dropping because two reasons. One, they could be a great time to buy. So some of these books have dropped by almost 70%. So that's like a good time to like maybe pick them up and we'll give you an analysis why these comics may be going up in the future or continuing to drop. Whether you're collecting, speculating, or investing, I hope this data helps you on the hunt. Hit the like, slap the subscribe button. You know we got a giveaway on deck. And David, why don't you start them off at number 10 with Marvel Superhero Secret Wars issue number eight. So this is the first appearance and origin of the symbiote black suit. It was actually published later than Spider-Man 252. But in a 9-4 in May, this sold for $4.26. It is now currently selling for $2.23. That is a 48% drop. A 9-6 sold for $4.50 back in June and now currently sells for $300. That is a 33% drop. And then a 9-8 in September, so a few months ago, sold for $11.40 and now sells for $6.80. That is a 40% drop. And if you look at the top of the screen, you can see a graph and you can see how it's kind of trending down. Now, I personally think that this is still an iconic cover and a very good key. So I think in the long run, this is still a safe investment. So it's probably a good chance to pick up this key right now. I still think it could drop slightly more but I think he'll rebound. I agree with you, David. And I'll remind the community that Jim Shooter, the editor-in-chief back in the day, has gone on the record multiple times in the last few years talking about a call that he got from Marvel to sell the rights that he was tied to for the Secret Wars franchise. Because he has hit the mic multiple times and reminding the community that this is something that Marvel was interested in, that's why we've seen some spikes over time. However, it does not mean that Secret Wars is happening anytime soon. Next at the list at number nine, we're talking Tales of Suspense, issue number 50. The first appearance of the Mandarin. Yeah, so spoiler alert, the Mandarin actually died in Shang-Chi. But there is kind of another Mandarin, and just because you're dead in the MCU doesn't mean that you can't come back. We've seen it multiple times. But here we go at a 5-0 back in May. It's uh, 5-0 sold for $1,300. Now it sells for $630. That's a 52% drop. A 7.0 sold in September a few months ago for 10.25. Now it sells for 8.98. That's a 12% drop. And an 8.0 back in July sold for a peak of $3,050. Now currently selling for $1,641. That is a 46% drop. Honestly, my opinion, even though Mandarin is great, I don't think there's a lot of headroom with him in the MCU going forward. So I think it will still continue to go down, but the Mandarin is still a great character and will always command some money. So let it drop a little more if you're looking to pick this one up. I'm curious if Ben Kingsley will reprise his role in future MCU films. It may cause this book to uptick again, but regardless, this is an excellent character and a Silver Age key book nonetheless that's awesome in any collection. If this book dips even more, it may be great to purchase for your personal collection because it's not just about speculating and investing. Sometimes you got to own some dope silver. Next at the list, at number eight, we're talking Marvel premiere issue number 15. Iron Fist's first appearance. And David, you're hearing the rumors. It sounds like Charlie Cox is indeed the daredevil in the MCU confirmed by Feige. Well, does that mean that we have the other Defenders superheroes that may accompany him? 100%. Now that although depends if they decide to use these characters going forward. 
but they are definitely part of the MCU. We're looking at an 8.0, peaking in May for $800, down 52%, now selling for $384. The 9.0, same month in May, going for $900. Current market is showing $600 sales. That is down 33%. Hit them with the 9.4. And a 9.4 had a record price in September for 1900 and now it sells for 1080 That is down 43%. Looking at the list at number seven, we have New Mutants 98, the first appearance of Deadpool. This book has been so volatile over the year, whether it be the newsstand, direct market copy, or the Mark Jeweler. Okay, so we got a 9.4 back in April, had a record price of $800. Now it sells for $450. That is a 44% drop. A 9.6 back in October, so not too long ago, had a record price of $1,300. Now it sells for $625. That is a 52% drop. And then last, we got a 9.8. Back in April, it had a peak price of $3,000. Now it sells for 1853. That is a 38% drop. If you look up at the top graph up there, you will see a dark purple line. That is the average pricing when you add up all the peaks and the valleys and things like that. But then the light purple is all the peaks and the lows. The 9.8s that we're referring to are direct market sales. The $3,000 marker is something we would expect a newsstand to go for in today's market. However, back in April, this was when the newsstands were starting to hit their rise. People were starting to invest in these for the first time, really, in comic collecting history. So $3,000 heights were what the newsstands and directs were going for. Now that it's leveled out, I suspect it's because members are now seeing the difference in availability in the marketplace. I will also add that a newsstand had a record price in a 9.8 for $5,200. And the reason why a newsstand in a higher grade commands a lot more, as you get in the lower grades, it doesn't. Because imagine having a comic on a newsstand and people going through it and then putting it back. So the odds of getting a 9.8 are much, much higher. It's easier to get like an 8.0 in a newsstand. We've also seen a drastic change in the Mark Jeweler interest as well. Back in April, we saw a Brand new high for a 9.8 Mark Jeweler New Mutants 98 sell for nearly $10,000. The sale was for $9,850. This very week, we saw a 9.8 Mark Jeweler sell for $4,551. Nearly half of what it sold for at its April peak. So even though this book has been dropping by almost 50% in some categories, I still think this is a great time to buy this book. Could it drop a little more? Yeah, I think slightly a little more, but don't wait too long because with Deadpool 3 right around the corner and also Deadpool as a character is a massive character. He's not going anywhere. This is a good time to think about picking up a copy. Moving over to number six, we have Dane Whitman. Goodness, Avengers 48. Dane Whitman going full Black Knight. A 6.0 back in July could have been secured for $900. That's down 46%, now selling for $482. The 8.0 going for $2,000 in June, down 57%, selling for $862. The 9.0. July's peak, selling for $3,360, down 38%, barely clearing the 2K marker, selling for $2,075. Is it because of the Eternals, or is it because Kit Harrington didn't go full Black Knight? Honestly, all Eternal books, whether it's Black Knight or just the Eternals, have dropped significantly. I think it's probably because the movie didn't do as well as people were hoping he would do. It's the lowest rated Marvel movie from the critics, and I think the lowest rated from the audience as well. That does not help any of the Eternals' future. Could the Eternals show up in other MCU movies? I'm betting on it, but will it be Black Knight and will it be just a cameo or will he be full Black Knight? That I don't know. So it's definitely speculation at this point. We got to keep an eye out on characters like this because although they are down, it all depends on how they're going to be utilized in the future. Utilize Kotom 101 on the best comic app in existence, Key Collector Comic Books. You're going to get key alerts. Whenever the news breaks, Key Collector Comics is going to be there to keep you up to date. Next at the list, at number five, we're talking Wolverine's second, third, Fourth appearance. I don't even know anymore. Hulk 182. <laughs> Here we got Wolverine's second cameo appearance. Not his first full or second full appearance. At a 5-0, back in May, it sold for 325. 
Now that same book sells for 135. That is a 58% drop. And Edo in September, a few months ago, sold for 637. Now that sells for 264. That is almost a 60% drop. And then we got a Nino back in June selling for 950. That same book today sells currently for $370. That is a 61% drop. I still think there's a ton of room left here for Wolverine. It's just had a huge boom and now it's dropped down, but it will come right back. So don't let this drop too much longer before it spikes again. Hulk 180, 181, giant size X-Men one. They've all had juggernaut sales in the last year. Imagine when these books hit all new highs, when the inevitable introduction of the mutants hit the MCU. And when members can't afford those three issues, 182 starts looking better and better by the day. All right, next on this list, we got Immortal Hulk number two. This is the first appearance of Dr. Fry, and I cannot believe how popular this book was a few years ago, but it is not so much anymore. That's right. I think a combination of Al Ewing moving from the title, it getting transferred over to Donny Cates, which is really exciting, but he's taking it more of a cosmic narrative. Dr. Fry, when he was introduced back in the Immortal Hulk run, Gaining popularity in the teens retroactively made the earlier issues, the single digit issues, that much more attractive to own. And Dr. Fry was a character introduced in the Lou Ferrigno television show. So this was a very interesting character to just see pop up that members really had high faith would end up doing more things in Marvel Comics. But he didn't, and the numbers are showing that. Okay, at a 9-4, it peaked in April of 2019, so over two years ago, at $150, it now sells for $60, and that is a 60% drop. A 9.6 back in May of 2019 sold for $220, now sells for $70. That is a 68% drop. On all the books on this list that we curated today, David, this comic book on the graph is showing a consistent decline yes. year over year yes. compared to all the others. This one on the con floor, I remember being a comic to hunt for. Dealers wanted it on their walls next to their major keys, next to their blue chip books. Oh, how far we've come. April 2019, the 9.8 hit $450. Current prices put it at 188. That's down 58%. Next at the list, at number three, we got Jack Kirby. Goodness. We got Ancient Aliens. We have Eternals number one. Yes. So a 9.4 sold in May for $809. That was a record price then. Now it's dropped 77% to $188. A 9.6 in May sold for $16.53, now sells for 400 bucks. That's 76% drop. A 9.8 peaked in May for $3,800. You know what it goes for now? It's dropped 52% to $1,800. And these are all CGC graded comics that we are talking about on this list. This is an example of the impact a comic can have in value if the movie doesn't land just right. If the characters are not able to relate to the viewers, to the audience, to the fans, like other superheroes that we are being introduced to. Exactly. Because there are so many new characters for us to become fans of. Eternals didn't quite get us there, and that's why we're seeing these prices drop. I thought maybe we would see it exceed 4K, and clearly it is not trending in that direction. Next, at the list, at number two, we have probably one of the biggest keys to start out Disney Plus when Marvel's debut of WandaVision hit. We have West Coast Avengers, issue number 45. So here we have a 9-4 selling in March for $350. It has dropped 73% and now sells for $93. Under $100, you can pick up a CGC graded book of this West Coast Avengers 45. I kind of love this cover because it's homage to Avengers 57 when it has like the red vision on there. Well, it's, he's not red, but he's colored in red. Anyways, a 9.6 in February sold for $625. Now that same book has dropped 80% to $128. And a 9.8 peaked in March 
for $1,950. Now it currently sells for $575. That is a drop of 71%. Comic Tom, do you think this book will bounce back. I think this book could see a little bit of an uptick when we see the reintroduction of the transparent vision and the cinematic universe as we were introduced to in WandaVision. However, I think the gains happen because of the excitement of Disney+. Plus. This was really... I believe the first dollar bin book, $5 book to see tremendous gains because of the show. All of that coupled to staggering heights of a book that now is seeing crazy downtrends in price. I also think the reason why there's a massive downtrend is because during this time, CGC got massively backed up and everyone sent their copies and now they're all getting them back and now they're just flooding the market with all these West Coast Avengers 45, which supply and demand, not enough demand, too much supply, that really hurts the value of a book. Hit the like, slap the subscribe button. If you like the coverage of colder comics, if you find it useful, let me know by commenting. It'll enter you to win a Ice Cream Man Virgin variant done by Davy Go. And make sure to follow David over at Comic Book Investments over on YouTube. Link is in the description. David, you do a fun amount of coverage, whether it's CGC unboxings, collectibles, you're a full-time dealer and you are in the know for comic prices. Yes. Uh, this is what I do for a living. So I do this every single day, seven days a week, all day long. It's how we do comic fam. Hit the subscribe and David do the honors. Tell them the number one coldest book on our list today. All right. The number one coldest book, which breaks my heart because I'm a huge fan is Raphael number one. This is a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles book. A 6.5 back in May sold for $390. Now sells for $242. Down 38%. Not as bad as some of the other ones on the list, but it gets worse. A 7.5 in February sold for $750. Now sells for $285. That is down 62%. And the worst one of all, a 9.6 back in December of 2020. So kind of when the boom started, sold for $5,040. That same 9.6 CGC graded sells for $1,320. That is down 74%. That hurts. <laughs> comic fam when Jem and I your boy Jim started in. reporting on the heights of the market back in December the comics defining this generation of collectors it started this boom with the nostalgia cycle going into full gear with TMNT issue number one breaking records that we have never seen in comic book history thus other comics started to spike and we would then go out throughout the rest of the year and see other 80s titles, Copper Age books, The Crow, Thundercats, G.I. Joe, now grew on spec radar, seeing such strong numbers. Well, Raphael's the first appearance of Casey Jones. This is a tough book. It's oversized. So the FOMO was real, but clearly this book is down. We appreciate your time today, as always. This has been amazingly fun to share this information with you guys on Tom's channel and always geek responsibly. Enough said. We got two other videos for you to check out. We made them for you. Have a great week.